Hi, I'm Tinny from Mini Bowl Design, and uh, if you watched my last video about starting a survival kit, it generated quite a bit of interest, and I got a lot of email and feedback, and I got to tell you, I learned a lot. First off, uh, right up front, uh, going right back to the beginning with my water treatment system, I discovered something. Uh, if you read the directions to the Porta Aqua, or any of these iodine-based water treatment systems, PA plus or any of them. Uh, down here it kind of quietly in very fine print says uh, germicidal tablets have not been shown to inactivate cryptosporidium cysts. So uh, that kind of bothers me because cryptosporidium, eh, my daughter got very, very sick from it when she went on a field trip and they drank some cider that was freshly pressed with fresh apples and some of them were picked off the ground and had obviously some to sort of animal feces in with them and the the whole school was sick like three or four days later I know it says like ten days but trust me on this it wasn't ten days the whole school was shut down within I'm gonna say two to five days the whole school was shut down and everybody had uh, cryptosporidium very very sick took about twelve days to get over it so uh, since that is from animal feces and you know beaver or animals or deer or anything or moose or anything that's uh, gotten into the water system will give you cryptosporidium big time and since the uh, symptoms are even if I didn't get sick while I was out lost uh, a week later if I get sick I don't want to go through that under any circumstances so I did some research on it and I believe that uh, Chuck McKinney is right uh, he carries a small bottle of bleach, 6%, uh, 5.25% uh, bleach. And it says 16 drops to a gallon, so that roughly means 4 drops to a liter. And my bag that I have, my platypus bag, is not 2 quarts, it's 1 liter. So 4 drops of uh, chlorine bleach, unscented, not color safe, just standard, no frills, uh, laundry bleach. 5.25% uh, active ingredient uh, is, as far as I can tell, as good as it gets. Uh, you put four drops in a liter, let it set a half an hour, then you check it. If it doesn't smell of bleach, then you put a little bit more in and let it set another 15 minutes. And that should kill basically most everything and make it safe. It's cheap. It's in a smaller container. Yes, it's going to taste a little bit by bleach, but you got to realize we're in a survival environment here. We're not at the hill. Uh, so that makes my kit even smaller and even cheaper. Uh, the platy bottle is going to be kind of hard to fill. I'm not sure whether I'd go with that or a really heavy freezer type one gallon Ziploc, either one. But that makes a big difference. Uh, and, and that's worth knowing. That's a valuable piece of information and it's made the kit that much easier. Another thing I'm uh, or immediately started getting flack for is I'm finding out that people are extremely uh, opinionated about survival kits and there's a reason for that after looking at the whole thing and believe me I'm no expert on this I've discovered that it depends a lot on whether you're a man a woman or a child whether you live in the south or the north whether you're in the woods and your survival kit is basically just stuff to get you out of the woods or whether it's stuff to treat you if you're injured in the woods or whether it's just to sustain you for three or four days until somebody finds you and so that makes like the 16 different kits. So right up front, not an expert, this kit is going to be designed for where I live because I know about where I live. And I know I don't need a snake bite kit. There's no poisonous snakes in me. So this is a kit to just sustain yourself and survive in the woods for three days in moderate weather. Not the middle of the winter, you know, summertime, fall, spring. Uh, and that's what I'm designing this kit for, Maine, moderate weather, survival. It's not going to be right chock full of medical supplies. It's not going to be right chock full of, of maps and compasses and, and GPSs and all that kind of stuff. It's just to, to sustain yourself and be as comfortable as you possibly can with a very small package. And this is about the size I'm talking about right here. You can swing this around and back. You don't even know you've got it on. Uh, something about that size uh, just to sustain yourself so you have uh, cover the, 
the, the threes rule, you know, three minutes without air. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to run out of air. Air's pretty plentiful in Maine, and as long as I keep my head above water, I'm pretty good there, so I'm not even going to cover air. Oxygen bottle won't fit in here anyway. Uh, let me see, three minutes. Three hours, now that's a big one. Heat, keep your core temperature up. If your core temperature drops down below a certain number, three hours you're dead. Hypothermia, that's a big one. So I definitely, in Maine, as cold as it is, I want something to keep my core temperature up and keep my clothes dry. And uh, three days without water, so I definitely want to have some way to supply myself with good water and not make myself sick. So those are the, the three things, air, heat, and water to begin with. And I don't care when anybody says, I'm going to have some supplies in there to build a fire. Because if for nothing else, a fire at night is a very comforting thing. It's good for the mental. It's good to keep you warm. It's good to signal with. It's not high tech. Maine is full of firewood. You don't have to be a genius to start a fire. So uh, I'm definitely going to put fire, uh, some sort of fire starting materials in there. And I don't care what anybody says. One guy says you don't want to carry any food because it will be attract bears. Well, okay, but I really think a few power bars or something in there would be a really good idea. Um, there's not that many bears in Maine, and, you know, I'm willing to take the chance. So, <laughs> I'm Tinny from Mini Bowl Design. Get out and hike, and more important than anything, have a great day. Bye-bye.